Okay, today's lesson is on radians. Now this is an alternative way of measuring angles. You're used to measuring angles in degrees. This is another way that we can measure um, angles and it's based around circles, which is why this particular unit is called circular measure. Now say we take this circle and we've got um, an, a sector area here that we're looking at. So this sector is bounded by those two lines which are both radii. It's at each of those lengths is the same as the radius. They're coming from the center of the circle. Now this particular sector, um, the size of it is determined by the arc length here. That arc length is also equal to a radius. When that happens, the angle that we get in the middle is called one radian. So it's a very particular measure where we take a sector whose arc length is r, then the angle that we get at the centre of that sector is called one radian. Now if we're using this to compare to the normal measures of degrees that you're used to, we can start by thinking about the circumference, which is always equal to 2 pi r. So if we want to count how many radians would go into a full circle, we need to think about how many times the radius would fit around the circumference. So if we divide that circumference by the radius, or 2 pi r divided by r, we would get 2 pi. So this means that the radius fits 2 pi times around the circumference of the circle, which means that a full 360 degree turn would be the same as 2 pi radians. Now actually when we write this out, if we've got pi in our answer, we don't bother to write the radians part because we can assume that when it's written in pi, we know we're talking about radians. This leads us on to the next result, which is very, very important. So if 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees, pi is equal to 180 degrees. Now, I'm going to highlight that a lot because that's your basic way of changing between radians and degrees. You need to know that 180 degrees is the same as pi if you're talking about radians. So let's have a look at how we can use this and convert between radians and degrees. So to change to radians we would need to divide by 180 degrees and multiply by pi and then we'll get how many degrees it is. Since pi is equal to 180, if we've got something that's in degrees, we would just need to divide by that 180 and times by pi. So we'll do it with these ones. So if 180 degrees is pi, 90 degrees is half of 180, so that's half of pi, or 90 pi over 180, which is pi by 2. Next one, 270, we're going to times it by pi and divide by 180, and simplify that to 3 pi by 2. 45 degrees, well that's a quarter of 180, so we come out with a quarter pi, or pi by 4. 30 degrees, 30 out of 180 is a sixth, so we get pi by 6. And continuing that on, 75 degrees, 5 pi by 12. Now it doesn't always come out to a nice fraction that we can use. It's, it's great when it does. We would prefer to have fractions, but sometimes it comes out as a decimal, and you'd write it like this. So if we do that division, we get 4.3 radians. So that's 247 divided by 180 times by pi makes 4.3, and you write that as 4.3 rad for 4.3 radians. Can you put that into your calculator now and check that you know how to get that answer? Okay, and the other way, if we start with something in radians and we want to change it into degrees, we will need to divide by pi and times by 180. We're just doing the opposite. So let's do it for these ones. Three quarters of pi, divide it by pi, so we're removing that pi from the fraction, it's going to get cancelled out. So we're doing three quarters times 180, three quarters of 180 is 135. Same with the next one, divide by pi and then times by 180, so we're looking for 7 sixths of 180, which is 210 degrees. Next, 3 fifths of 180, 108 degrees. Now these ones are in decimals, 1.12, we'll divide it by pi, these ones you'll have to do on the calculator, so divide it by pi times by 180. And 5.2 radians, divide it by pi times by 180, is 297.9 degrees.